Regardless of the outcome of the marriage survey, the last couple of months have shown us that some of the freedoms we hold dear here in Australia need to be better reflected in Australian law. Article 18 of the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights refers to the fundamental human rights to freedom of thought, freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. And where these rights are concerned, there are a few aspects that we believe need to be put fairly and squarely on the public agenda. First is the issue that these rights are not just rights that belong to institutions, but are the rights that belong to every single individual. It's therefore not enough for legislators to say when making laws, well, we'll protect some of those rights for churches or for some other religious bodies. That's just not good enough. We need to ensure that these rights are protected for every single person here in Australia. Secondly, is the issue that these rights are not just rights that can be exercised in private, but Article 18 specifically refers to these rights, these freedoms of thought, conscience and religion being manifest in public. Now, why that's particularly important is that we live in a Western society that is increasingly saying we don't mind what you believe, we don't mind where you worship or whether you worship, but don't you think that you can walk out into the public square and live out those convictions in public? Well, guess what? Article 18 of the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights specifically says that these rights, these freedom of thought, conscience and religion, are not just freedoms that can be exercised in private, but which can be lived out in public. The third area that needs to be put fairly and squarely on the public agenda is the issue of parental rights. The reason is that Article 18.4 specifically says that parents have the right to raise their children in a manner consistent with their convictions. And that is particularly important here in Australia in light of programs such as safe schools, respectful relationships and any other similar program under a different name. Programs that provide sexually explicit material to children. Programs based on a gender theory with which many parents have a conscientious objection. We need to insist that as parents, we have the right to know what our children are being taught, that we are required to give our consent to children being in classes underpinned by such radical gender ideology, and thirdly, that we have the right to withdraw our children from classes that do not reflect our conscientious convictions without penalty to us as parents and more importantly, without penalty to our children. And lastly, we need to insist that these fundamental human rights should not be restricted or limited. Article 18 specifically says that these rights can only be restricted in severely limited circumstances and mentions for the preservation of public safety, order, health or morals, or in order to preserve the human rights of others. Now, even where that last category is concerned, it doesn't mean that we have here freedom of religion, we have here some competing human right, and therefore automatically this human right will be elevated and this right uh, will suffer. It doesn't say that at all. What Article 18 says is that even where there are competing human rights, that the human rights, the freedom to thought, conscience and religion should only be restricted so far as necessary to preserve some other human right or freedom. And we need to insist that legislators will not simply squash the freedoms of thought, conscience and religion when the mood takes them. We need to insist that if they are to be restricted in any circumstances, that before legislators look at whether the restriction is reasonable or proportionate, that they first pass the test. Is this restriction necessary? And if it doesn't pass the test of being necessary, that the restriction will not apply. Now we at Family Voice are putting all of those matters on the public agenda. 
and we would urge all Australians to join with us to protect and enshrine these fundamental freedoms in Australian law.